While most everyone across the country that loves sports is focused on March Madness, we continue to focus on college football. Here at the Voice of College Football, Texas A&M on the field at spring practice. And of course, if you're an Aggie, a true Aggie, and you love the Aggies, regardless of the team, the sport, you're a bit, um, let's say, a bit angered. We'll, we'll use that term. We could use others. We'll just say that based on the basketball outcome and the first four out uh conclusion there but it's on to the nit and i guess the first round game that i just saw posted we got uh andrew hedersley in the line of course from gigum 247 sports who covers football and basketball uh spring football practice is what we're talking about uh today so we're going to make that transition from basketball to football but i'm going to stay on the tournament beat before we get to the actual reality so we're going to stay in fantasy land uh with with a tournament uh so i put together a one through 128 so I had Texas A&M ranked. I just went through my 1 through 130 rankings from the conclusion of 2021, and I put a 1 versus 128, 2 versus 127. So it's a crazy tournament that obviously is never going to happen on the field. But uh, my first-round matchup for the Aggies at number 17 in the country is versus number 112, Navy. So that's mine. I just saw one with... Uh, ESPN put one together and they've got, uh, I think they put 64 teams out there and they've got Texas A&M beating Washington in the first round. And then they play Ole Miss and uh, they've got a, uh, an NIL bit of a battle there between Jimbo and Lane Kiffin in a second yeah. round matchup with <laughs> Ole Miss. So it's just kind of fun to kick around. I don't know if you've seen any other ones there, but um, of course there would be, if this ever happened, which it, it won't to this extent uh, some, ridiculous blowout matchups but uh that you know that middle like 30 to 90 could get some interesting some pretty, matchups some, some interesting matchups yeah yeah and i mean you'd also have um if we're like if we're doing it now with dj durkin now being at all miss you'd kind of have him going against his his old old miss team so that'd be certainly kind of interesting and, and obviously the jimbo lane kiffin kiffin deal would would be interesting as well i think if you're if you're going based on last year's you know, kind of where a and wound up, probably in that 16 to 20 range, I think it is fair. And, you know, obviously they hope for a lot better this year, but I think just with, with where they finished last year, that that's about right. So they're going to work to try to do just that off of eight and four and nine and one the year before and a near college football playoff appearance. So let's start with um, your trip to uh, College Station a couple times to check out uh, the Aggies. And of course, it's all limited. So we try to emphasize this this with everyone because you know better than i do you get hit with all sorts of questions with people thinking that you're you know you're analyzing every rep from every offensive lineman in practice and there's 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 more access and that's why we go to you of course uh you've got as much access as anyone but still it's it's very limited for the media yeah we get about the first four periods we got the first four periods on wednesday and the first three on thursday um, which was some special teams work in there too and, and things like that. Um, and so, you know, it's just a chance to get some video pictures, things like that. Um, yeah, first impressions, just looking at them. Steve Adazio, this was obviously our first chance to, to kind of see him and, and, and get a feel for him. He is, he is intense. Um, I think that's the best way to put it. He is, he is on the go the entire time. Um, just real, I think I think you I wouldn't be shocked if you see kind of his offensive line play with that sort of kind of reflect reflect what their what their coach is like this year because he is he is really really intense and you can tell he's he's, he's quite focused on the details um, on things like effort running to the line of scrimmage um, and and just doing everything with with kind of a maximum intensity so it was good to get to see him um the quarterbacks got to throw watch them throw a couple swing routes here and there and, and throw to some tight ends um the receivers were off doing drill work so didn't get a chance to see them um catch any passes or do anything like that but um i think one of one of the big takeaways too is even watching evan stewart go through drill work or or catch a catch a punt and and you know do kind of a mock punt return his explosiveness and and just his speed is just gonna is gonna be a, a huge huge factor for a And M, um, and he's also already drawn a lot of rave reviews for how he's come in and settled in pretty quickly and and earned a maroon jersey for his for his effort, which is one of the things a And M does during the spring, and um, looks to be off to a really really good start. 
Folks, please like the video, share these videos out on social media, because I figure if you enjoy the content, others will as well. So share the videos out on social media, subscribe right here, the voice of college football, check out Andrew's work, football, basketball, right there at uh, Gigum 247 sports. When we talk uh, Texas A&M football, of course, I'm going to make a note about Steve Adazio. As soon, as soon as you brought him up, of course, he had a kind of a rough go, his last uh, head coaching stint in Colorado State. But before that, uh, at Boston College, no, he didn't set the world on fire or win the ACC or anything. But um, they were going 7-5, seven 7-6 five, seven and six in that range every season except for one under Steve Adazio at Boston College. So considering the recruiting classes and the challenges there, they have – in getting players up to Boston College. He did a fairly nice job with BC. Um, the quarterback situation, I don't know how much you got going there and how much you can you can take us through at this point because it's extremely early. But, of course, we got Max Johnson. We got Haynes King in particular. And um, just any talk about uh, during the news conferences about how they're progressing or maybe what their skill sets look like. Yeah, so I think um... – it's it's obviously going to be probably deep into the fall before we hear it. I I would expect it. It'll be something similar to last year where it was kind of the Monday before the game where where Jimbo Fisher was doing a radio interview with ESPN, I think, and and announced who would, who would be starting. Um, but you know they rotated reps on the days that we saw them. Um, Haynes King went the ones on the Wednesday. Max Johnson went with the ones on the Thursday. Um, and you know you can definitely see what you know what what each brings to the table. I mean, Max Johnson had a couple balls with nice ball placement. His his re his release is a little longer than than Haynes King's is, just because of you know his size and his and his height um, takes a little a little longer to get the ball out. But placement wise, the ball looked good coming out of his hand. And um, I think the good news too is Haynes King. Uh, and Jimbo Fisher kind of talked about this before is fully healthy now and, and no limits and, and both had a really good spring leadership wise, athleticism, um, just working hard and in, in the kind of the off season workouts. So um, I think he's been really happy with both of them. And I think just the, the overall message that, that he had about his quarterback room is I think he feels like it's a much deeper room now. It's, it's a lot more solid, um, you know, he's probably got three good options he feels good about turning to. Um, obviously, Connor Wigman has has some growing to do, but um, I think he feels really good about where it is. And, you know, whoever he has to go with um, or decides to go with, I think he'll feel a lot more comfortable with. And, um, you know, it, it's going to be a battle. And it's going to be, you know, I think he, he wants to bring out the competition in both of them and, and see who rises to the top. And um, that's really been the message this offseason is competition. And, you know, at every position and, and see who rises to the top. Got Andrew Hattersley on the line from Gigum 247 Sports, breaking down Texas A&M football with the Aggies on the field, preparing for 2022. And as you just mentioned to me before we started to record, we'll have more coming up in the next few weeks on, on recruiting, uh, kind of a, a bit of a silent dead period right now, but a uh, couple big weekends coming up, but we don't know exactly who's going to show up at this point. Yeah, so it looks like March 26th is going to end up being one of their bigger weekends. They wanted to get guys in um, during spring practice, and so um, did have a a big visitor last week that stopped by uh, David Hicks. He was on spring break and on his way down to to see some family in Houston. Um, so he stopped by for an A and M practice, and um, you know, just it was the first time he had a chance to see them in in, in kind of a practice setting, and. Um, He's a, he's a massive target for A&M in, in the upcoming class. So for him to get the chance to see Terry Price and Elijah Robinson um, kind of go through a practice, I think was was good for him to see. And, and the feedback coming out of it seemed to be, you know, really good talking with some other people this weekend. Um, but other than that, you know, they'll have uh, Levius Overton coming in for a visit on March 26th, uh, along with his brother, um, that's a big one. He reclassified from the 2023 class up to the 2022 class. Um, so he's going through his visits now and, and in hopes of making a decision later this spring. And, um, you know, th that would kind of take up the last two spots that A&M has in their class uh, for the 2022 cycle. Uh, but obviously he's Levius Overton's 
one of the top defensive linemen in the class. So, um, you know, they, they'd still love to have him. And uh, he does plan to, to play with his brother. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're kind of a package deal. Um, so those, those are a couple of the big ones. And then, you know, a guy like Javian Taviano, who's a, a top cornerback in the class, is, is planning to be at Texas later this month and then also said he wants to get back to A&M probably later in April. Um, didn't have an exact date of if that'll be for the spring game or, or what date that'll be for, but, um, he's planning to, to get back. And, um, there's some other guys too. Uh, there's a five-star receiver, Jalen Brown out of Gulliver prep that, that has been looking to make a trip for a while. And so, um, you know, they'll, they'll, I'm sure try to get him on campus soon as well. An early, early, early crystal ball projection from your colleague there, two, four, seven sports, uh, Steve Wilt Fong has uh mr yeah. Hicks going to uh yeah texas a m so Are i think right, the best player right, in the country right now um yeah it's really oklahoma and a and m have have kind of been the two that are are battling it out and it's it's neck and neck um between those two texas is 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 the team that Hicks grew up rooting for and so can't really count them out and um you know it it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out he's not planning to make a decision until the under armor all america game um, so still a, yeah, a very long way to go in this one. Andrew, we always appreciate you stopping by, giving us the latest on, uh, the Aggies. So we'll catch up with you in a few weeks. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thanks for having me.